Today I'm going to show you how to rewind your brushless motor whenever you need to fix it or because you want to change its properties. Let's not waste any more time and get started. I've been fixing motors for quite some time now, so I have a bit of experience on how to do it. I started to do this because I wanted to know how these brushless motors work and also because I wanted to know if I could be able to fix one by myself. But it's actually better to buy a new one because they are very cheap and the time that you spend doing these fixes is not worth it. Another reason why you would like to do this yourself, it's because the way you wind a brushless motor will define the way it will behave. I'm talking about the KV, torque and other characteristics like the voltage it will support and amps, also depending on the copper wire you're using. So right now what you're looking at are the different motors I have taken apart to do the rewinding. Now the bigger motors are easier to work with than the smaller ones. The smaller ones are very, very small, so to wind these little pieces, it's a challenge. So when do you know that you need to fix your brushless motor by making a rewinding? Well, if your motor doesn't work because it's kicking or it doesn't rotate at all, and you know that your ESC is okay, then the motor is the problem. So you have to check very quickly if the windings are okay, if they're broken or the, one of the three wires is broken. This is caused when there is a lot of fatigue, especially in the joints with the wires that goes to the ESC or because you push too far in one of the screws that touch the windings and it broke it. And of course, one of the most common ones is that your motor is burned. So you will see the black windings or even one of them is enough to make it bad. Or you can also smell when it's burned. So the first step is to take the motor apart. This kind of motors is very easy, very simple, but it takes a little bit of practice. The first thing we need to do is to take the clip off that it's found at the bottom part of our motor and it's holding our shaft in place. To do this, I use two little flat screwdrivers and I put one facing the other and just try to enlarge this clip and take it off. Now, you can lose this clip because it is like a spring, so just be careful not to lose it. And if you do, you will have to buy new ones. After you take the clip off, now you are good to take the other part, which is a kind of a washer, and then you are free to remove the bell. The bell is this whole part that holds the propeller and inside you will find the magnets. We don't have to do anything with it, we have to work on the other half, which is the stator. Now we have to take the stator out of the base and that's the complicated part. The stator and the base are very two strong pieces that are glue or pressed together during the manufacturing process and they're very strong so it's very complicated to get them apart again. And during the process of separating these two pieces we can damage the stator by warping it and also the base because we're gonna use very heavy tools. So the technique that I use is using some heat and a little bit of oil to widen the material a little bit more so it's easier to take them apart. So remember that you have to be patient because this stage is one of the most frustrating ones by taking apart these two pieces. After you do so, you also have to take the old windings off and that's also a hassle because most of the windings are very tight. So maybe you can use a wire cutter or something similar to speed up the process. While you are unwinding the old wire, just notice how many turns are in each pole. That way you will have an idea on what's the standard, but that will change depending on the thickness of the new wire. Also take a look at the thickness of the original wire. That way if you want to rewind it the same way it was before, you should use the same thickness of wire and number of turns. And that's the next step by the wire that you're going to use. It has to be an NML copper wire or insulated copper wire because if you use any normal copper wire without insulation, it simply won't work. And so we start doing the windings. But before doing so, make sure the stator doesn't have any sharp edges that will cut the wire and make it a short circuit. Some of the insulation was removed during the process of removing the old wire. So I used some epoxy glue to cover those gaps. And after that, I can proceed to do the windings. 
Now the wanding has to be done in a certain way. In the description below I'm going to leave a link to a website where they explain how to do the windings. There's also a table on several configurations depending on how many poles and magnets your motor has. But I will show you how it will be in my motor. It has 12 poles. And as we know these motors have three phases. These letters represent the phases. Capital letters represent winding in one direction and the small letters that the winding have to be in the other direction. So starting from number one in a clockwise direction, we start assigning those letters in order to each ball. It doesn't matter if for capital letters you select to wind in clockwise or counterclockwise direction, as long as for the small letters it's the opposite. So we start winding this stator according to the information given. We start from pole number one. To avoid any confusion on the direction of the winding, make sure every pole you're winding is pointing towards you. As you see, that's face A represented on the red color. Now we're going to take another copper wire to start face B. And then face C. To avoid any confusion, you can use some tape to identify each terminal. After you finish winding, you should end up with six different wires. And now you have to select a termination. There are two different terminations, the delta and Y. With the delta termination, you have higher RPMs and less torque. And the Y termination, you have less RPMs but more torque. Normally, these motors have the Y termination, which is just joining or soldering together the end of each face. So that's what I'm going to do. So I proceed to do my winding with a lot of patience. After that, I do some tests. And if it fails, then it's time to do it again, with a lot more patience. After that, our motor is ready, so I'm going to test it and see if it works. But the final test is in the real world, using it as a propulsion system for my RC airplane. Here's another small brushless motor that I fixed, and it works just fine. As you can see, fixing brushless motors is not that difficult. You can also do experiments using different thickness of copper wires, different amount of turns, etc. I hope you found this video very helpful. If you want me to keep doing videos like this and support my work, please consider subscribing and also leaving a like and maybe comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next project.